Well, I started the uh, 2020 growing season in late March with some videos of yellow buckeye starting to open up in the uh, mild days of early March, which did not translate to mild days in April or May. It was very chilly in those two months. So we had a lot of time to study the plants before they opened up this year, but now it's mid-August. And I mentioned with those yellow buckeyes, they were early to rise, but also early to bed. They often lose their leaves or lose some of their leaves by mid to late summer. And that's exactly what's going on here, folks. I'm looking around. Everything's green. We got some beech trees that are green. We've got some beautiful uh, heart-shaped basswood leaves that are green here. And all of a sudden you're walking along. We got some nice pawpaw leaves that are still green. And then we got what's going on. It looks like fall with this tree. And then we got a pawpaw who's nice and green. And all of a sudden more looks like October instead of August here. And some of these trees, these smaller yellow buckeye trees have actually lost all their leaves. The, the saplings and smaller trees and the one in the background there is probably 60 feet high. And half of its leaves are discolored. This is um, a leaf blotch, which is a fungus which affects many of the Ohio buckeye and yellow buckeye trees native to the area covered by this channel. And you can also find it on horse chestnut trees, which people often plant. So this is an easy way to tell you're looking at buckeye trees in August and early September because they're turning brown long before anything else. But they also compensate for it by getting their leaves out in early spring in time to catch the sunlight before the other trees open up so i'll do some videos on the ohio buckeye this park here has only the yellow buckeye that i can find this is near the ohio river in claremont county ohio at the pierce township park and they got several miles of trails back here and it's close enough to the ohio river this is great yellow buckeye habitat here it's moist soil and our yellow buckeye has more of a brown tannish color with some dimples on it and our Ohio Buckeye bark, as I've shown in the other videos, is more of a leathery appearance and is a little more flaky and more of an ash gray color. So let's keep studying these two trees. And we're going to add some of the fruits to this segment here in a few days, as soon as I can find some that have opened up. And we'll continue studying these two magnificent trees, the Ohio and Yellow Buckeyes. And let's continue our study of the uh, two native buckeyes to the Ohio Valley, Lower Great Lakes, and Appalachians. What I've got today is an Ohio buckeye in mid-August with similar uh, leaf blotch that we saw on the yellow buckeye a few days ago. Again, not every leaf is covered, but it tends to be more common on the smaller trees and on the branches lower to the ground. As we look up this tree, a lot of the upper leaves actually are still quite green. So the spores of this blotch, which is a fungus, come off the leaf litter and get on the lower branches especially and discolor the leaves. And a lot of them actually fall to the ground on these smaller trees. So it doesn't kill the tree, but it certainly uh, limits what it can do during the growing season. We're along the uh, Jamestown Connector here in Greene County, Ohio. It has a great trail network for biking and horseback riding. I've got another one right down the trail here that's got all kinds of buckeyes on it. Let's pause just for a second and we'll take a look. And we'll resume on here. If you remember the video I did in April where I found Ohio buckeye and yellow buckeye in bloom down in uh, Hanover, Indiana, the flower stalk was about four to six inches long with dozens of flowers on it. And this particular flower stalk here, having a hard time keeping this down to ground level here. Let's try this other one instead. You can still see where some of those flowers have dried out, but of the dozens of flowers on that stalk, only two or three have become nuts. Those nuts are about two to three inches across, and some are warty, and some even have little spines on them here. And they will dry out, and the buckeyes will become 
visible in a few weeks here, maybe in September sometime. I'm going to collect a few of these and bring them home, and we'll take a better look at these buckeyes in the fall once they dry out and I can get a good look at the seed. I'm not going to split them open. I'm going to let Mother Nature do that. But we'll keep continuing the, studying these trees, and I'm going to look for some yellow buckeye fruits. Um, as soon as I can get near where they grow, the park I was at the other day didn't have any fruits on the trees. We're going to try to add that to this video series, too. And we'll continue studying our yellow and Ohio buckeyes in the late summer here. This is now early September. And some of these yellow buckeye trees that are in the understory have lost all their leaves. And all we've got right now is next year's bud, waiting for late March to spring open again. The taller trees here at California Woods actually still have quite a few leaves, so that fungus that afflicts the lower branches doesn't always affect these taller yellow buckeye trees to any extent. And I was fortunate enough today to find a yellow buckeye fruit Still clinging to a branch of a tree that was getting a little more sun. And I've got it on display here. I'm going to leave it here. There's no collecting at this park, so it's going to stay here once I'm done videoing it. The yellow buckeye fruit is on the right. I got my pocket knife there for scale and a dollar bill for scale. It's the size of a Bartlett pear and the same color as a Bartlett pear. Um, the guy didn't know better, he'd think it was a Bartlett pear, except the trees don't grow in the wild. On the left are some buckeye fruits I collected a few weeks ago that are smaller. The largest one here is maybe two inches across. And you got a quarter there for scale as well. So the Ohio buckeye fruits on the left are warty and even have little spines on them. And at the very least, they're lumpy. And the yellow buckeye fruit is so smooth you can mistake it for a pear. I'm going to pause for just a second and let's go ahead and crack these open and take a look at the nuts. And continuing on, on our left are the Ohio buckeye seeds that have dried out and split open pretty easily. The one on the top right corner here only has one buckeye inside it. The one in the top left has three. The one on the bottom right has two. And the one on the bottom, uh, or excuse me, bottom left has two, and the bottom right has three. And the guidebook says they have between one and three seeds inside the husk, and that's correct. This yellow buckeye um, wasn't dry yet. We've got a fruit or a seed inside there that's bigger than this quarter. It's probably two inches across. I'm not sure if that's one or if it will dry out into three. That might remain a mystery. Um, I don't want to take it with me to find out. So um, we'll probably just leave that unsolved at this point, but it's a much larger fruit. I'll put it back together here and you can see how large that is. And a much smoother fruit. So this channel is mostly about identification and finding things as you hike. Um, don't think I'm gonna have time to come back to this park to find these when they dry out. So we'll leave it unsolved as to how many seeds are inside it, but I'm guessing it was large enough it may split into several, like you're seeing on this Ohio Buckeye. But if you want to know which one it is, I think we've solved that problem. We've got a much smoother and larger fruit on the yellow Buckeye on the right, and a spinier, smaller fruit for the Ohio Buckeye on the left. And in some parks, you can find both on the same trail. So we'll uh, put the wraps on the uh, study of the yellow and Ohio buckeyes during this 2020 growing season and look forward to doing more with them in the future.